Hello and welcome to episode 53 of Speak Free with Maddie G. We are back. I'm joined here today by a very special guest. We've got Shaq in, uh, better known as, you know, your Instagram is Shaq TV. Um, you make, uh, you make great skits videos, um, you know, comedy videos, content creation. So we'll talk a lot about that today. And you're also a massive West Tigers fan like me, uh, where we actually met, we met at the Leichhardt game, um, against Manly, which we won. Fuck you, Luke Brooks. Um, (laughs) (laughs) just to put it out there, (laughs) just to put it out there. Um, but, uh, so we'll talk a bit about, uh, obviously the NRL today, West Tigers and, uh, sort of where we think we're heading uh, for next year. Got a few big signings mm. um, for next year. Um, but take me back uh, to your early content creation days. Um, when did you first sort of pick up a camera and, and want to film some content and, and put yourself out there into the world? Well, the first time, like I had a – I bought myself a little handy cam. Uh, I think this is like back in – Actually, the first time like I filmed anything was on like a Sony Ericsson phone. Um, it was I, I did parkour for seven years, so that's where I kind of like I had my first like sort of gist of content and like YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So Sony Ericsson, and I just like made a little video of like a compilation of me and my mate just doing random stuff, yeah, jumping man. on trees and over poles and stuff. But then I invested into a um, like a handy cam, um, and I made like my first video. I put it up on like the channel's called Dior Parkour. It doesn't like, there's no, there's no videos like um, get released there or anything like that. But um, yeah, so I r- released that um, maybe in 2000 and I'd say, I think it was 2009, maybe my first ever video. Yeah, I, wow. didn't, I don't know. I was using Windows Movie Maker for like editing and stuff like that. I used Did, to use Windows Movie Maker too to make yeah. like videos. It, it, was, it was actually goaded back in the day. Like, it, was. it was. It was so good. Uh, now I use Premiere, but like, I, I did use Windows Movie Maker, then Sony Vegas. So, but yeah, that was like my first ever time I'd pick up a camera and like just film something. It was from parkour. Like it was like just a compilation of stuff like in Sydney. Um, yeah. Just doing stuff with my friends and stuff. But yeah, like, man. Um, yeah. And whereabouts in Sydney are you from? I grew up in, um, I grew up in Piermont, so Sydney city. That's okay, where I spent yeah, most right. of my childhood in like teen years. And then like mid twenties, I'd like move around. So I bought a place and then moved there and then Moved back with my parents who were like in the east, and now I'm in like southeast of Sydney. So yeah. right, yeah. So how? So you're a massive Tigers fan. Did you go for Tigers as a, as a young kid as well? Um, or was that y- something? Later no, no, like? yeah, I did. So I, um, I, so I grew up in Piermont, um, which is like across the bridge from, from Balmain. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, that's the only team I knew that was around there. But I did have like, not gonna lie, someone. I think when I, because I, I wasn't born here, so I didn't know much about NRL and stuff. So when I moved here, I only knew about NRL like 2003, 2004. So oh, well, it was a pretty good time to become a Tiger fan. Yeah, it was. Know? So Benji was entering <laughs> the scene. And I think that's where like I kind of, because I just moved to Piemont in 2003. Back then I was like in like Botany, Miranda and stuff, but I didn't know like anything about NRL. But I, someone gave me like a, a rooster's ball. Um, I don't know where I got it from. I think someone just gave it to me for like a birthday present. Um, never became a Roosters fan. Um, I just, yeah, just Tigers for some reason, just because of Piermont. I think I went to the leagues club that's now in shambles at the moment, but yeah. like, uh, non-existent, non-existent <laughs> has been for the past like 15 years yeah. or so. Um, but yeah, i like, I just went for the Tigers cause we were just around the corner, went to the leagues club and, um, went to my first game in 2000 and I think my dad took me 2008 or 2007 versus Parramatta, um, and we got smashed. <laughs> Who lost? It was like ANZ Stadium at the time. And that's when my dad, like my dad also is like a Soviet Russian dude. Like he just doesn't understand footy at all. He just became a Parramatta fan just to like, you know, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, they beat the Tigers. They must be the best team. You know, yeah. you know it's like Soviet parents, but ethnic parents would understand. <laughs> like yeah, people with like ethnic parents, they'd understand like, yeah, that's how that's how their ethnic parents uh, roll. It's like, oh, they must be the best team. This guy's the best player. Like just seeing them once. But, <laughs> but he became a Parramatta fan. Is he um, still a Parramatta nah, fan? No, he's not a Parramatta fan. He doesn't know anything about NRL. Oh, okay, so he just enough. became, on that day, it was like, yeah, Parramatta, they're the best team. They're the team to beat. They're really good. Tigers, <laughs> no, nah, they're rubbish. Um, but yeah, so I went to my first Tigers game, 2007, 2008, something like that. Um, and then, yeah, and then for like the part, like 10 years, every time I go to a game, I just, they'd never win. So I'd never go to a game. Like it's just, I was like, every time I go, it's just, I'm like, I'm like cursed. Like, they just lose it. Like, so, but yeah, that's the kind of story of how I became a Tigers fan. Um, still am. 
will have, will forever be a mighty orange and black <laughs> tiger fan. It's been fucking it's hard, a, man. It's been hard. Um, obviously, it's I would say it's hard when everyone sort of knows that you're a Tigers fan as well. Yeah. You can't hide it. You know what I mean? You can't. No. In those shit times, people are going to message you. People are going to tag you and shit. People are going to like, you know, talk a lot of shit. But you know what? That's also a good thing because when we do get fucking success again. Yeah. You know. That's what I'm hoping you can, for. You can remember those times and celebrate, you know, how far we've come. And no one can call you a fucking bandwagoner then. Yeah. You know. I remember, uh, I remember we versed the Roosters in... Um, it was one of the finals where Braith and Asta kicked the field goal. Um, and I I went to school in the East. So I went to, I went to Waverly College, East school, full Bondi, like right in yeah. the thick of it. Um, a lot of Roosters fans there. And the next day, like, cause we lost that. Cause uh, I think it was Sean Kenny Dow who scored in the corner uh, in extra time or whatever the hell it was. Yes. Um, like, and I was gutted. Like I thought we had that game. That I was thought a we long had that game year. too, eh? That was like a hundred, what yeah. was it? 110 minutes or something? Something like that. And I thought we had it in a bag. I thought this was our year. I don't remember the year. I think it was, I, I, I 2010. Don't... I think it was, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we had... weren't knocked out of the finals no, from that game. Cause no, then no. we versed St. George in the prelim. Um, and yeah. got beat by yeah. one point. 2010, 2011, I think it was our like such good years like yes. to watch the Tigers. Like they were so good. Benji was like the best player in the world at that time. And oh, it was such good days. But yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I, I they lost obviously and um, came to school and was like, oh, how the Tigers, mate? Yeah, how'd they go? How they? So I just couldn't like, I just copped an earful from everyone, bro. And this <laughs> kid from the Piedmont, Balmain area in the Eastern suburbs after the Roosters like won from a field goal essentially. And then, you know, Oh, well, it happens. But yeah, I got a cop the knee full. And then I was like, yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And then obviously, yeah. And still to this day, to that, this. that game to me was a fucking robbery. Because yeah. they got the ball back when yeah, he kicked it's it. The, it's on the scrum. It's and on that, the scrum, I, I, yes. To this day, I'm, I'm so upset at that. Because that game, Simon Dwyer absolutely railed Jared Woody Hargraves. Hargraves, yes. Um, and he lost the ball and I was like, that's it. Tigers have won. Yeah. And then it was the scrum. And I was like, well, bro, if that scrum happened this like today- It would just be reset. It would be reset and 100%. we get the ball back and we win. And it's just- because that was right at the end, eh? That was, was right, right at the end. Because then he kicked the field goal. He kicked and the field goal. It was. It was. A, look, to be honest, it was an incredible field goal. Like he was angled, and it was just like Braith the and Asta, right? Yeah. And it yeah. Was like, Thanks for doing nothing at our club, Braith. Yeah. You fucking useless cunt. That's what happens, man. <laughs> That's what happens to every player that comes. To be honest, <laughs> not every player, but majority of players. Hundred uh, percent. It's a retirement village, you know, and then they leave. Or we'll have shitty sort of like you know half-hearted fucking players and they'll go to somewhere like Melbourne and that and they'll become a fucking superstar. Yeah, you know? or, or Manly and stuff and become superstars. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Luke. No, um, I'm talking about Tommy Talel. So. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, no, but that's what happens. It's just like, yeah, I guess. I guess when you're like, as a player, I think um, when you're at a team like the Tigers who have really haven't seen success for the past 10, 11, 12 years, um, it's kind of it's kind of hard when you keep losing, keep losing, and then you go to a team where it's like the energy is a bit more up. Yes, you know, it, it it puts you in a different like perspective, sort of thing. Like it's like oh yeah, now I'm like in a, surrounded by players that actually win games and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly, and it takes a lot of pressure off as well, especially for someone, 100%. especially for someone like Luke, Luke Brooks, because he was halfback for the Tigers. Yeah, right? so he's got the whole fucking world on his shoulders in terms of success for the Tigers, you know, like he's the man who should be leading that club. But he didn't have a person like Tommy Turbo, Jake exactly. Turbo. Exactly. Daily had no, Cherry like, Evans. He had no like New South Wales, like, or, or like any origin or representative players like on the team. 100%. And it's, and it's kind of hard when you don't have those sort of people around you. Like, yeah. you know, it, it is, it is hard, but like, I think the other way around is like, you have a chance to create a legacy for yourself everyone on the team if like you get them out of the rut that's why yes. like i see Lockie galvin and i'm like you know i'm happy that he stayed um and i'm happy that like he's having a go like we may not be winning games but he's having a go and i think that that should channel to the other players this kid's 18 years old he's like the youngest on the team i think so like that should show the other players are like oh like this kid is having a go he's trying to create a legacy like even if he pulls the tigers out of this rut like that that's like come on man like that's crazy i, I like it's like what it's like jerome luai and api are coming here it's like what more can they do like, yeah you're all right you can win premierships for penrith but like if you can go to a team that's like doing really really bad and has been for the past 10 years and change them around like that is crazy that's like a lebron so, sort of thing you know what 100%. i mean it's like lebron come coming back to cleveland and like 
getting them to the finals and they don't win, but like he's just changed them around, but then they win eventually. Like it's, it's, I think it's a great story for a player Yes, and for a team to do that. Like it's, you know, you can't all be high, high, high. It's like, otherwise when you do see the um, bad ends, like you don't know how to like kind of control your emotions with that. So, yeah. Well, I said when, when Jerome first <laughs> signed with Tigers, or there was a lot of talk of him maybe signing, I said, you know what Benji Marshall would have fucking said to him? 100% is you can stay at Penrith and you'll probably win another couple of comps, right? Yeah. But you're always going to be remembered as the guy who won it with Nathan Cleary there yeah, by your side. of course. You know what I mean? Nathan yeah. Cleary's always going to be the man of Penrith. He just is. And he's proven time and time again that he is that man, right? So he deserves that title. But for Jerome, he can come to the Tigers, a team that's fucking won three wooden spoons in a row now. If he can get us into the eight yeah. and be that leader... He goes down as a legend then, yeah. you know? He doesn't go down as a legend's playmaker, you know, halves partner. He goes down as a legend himself. So I think that was a huge reason. And obviously the money's good too. But <laughs> Money's good too. Money's always good. But uh, I think um, like as a, as a, money's good for the NRL. Like it's because we don't, we don't pay players like it's the NBA and stuff. It's, it's not a massive like sport, obviously. It's a massive sport here, but it's not a massive sport worldwide. So money, money's really good. And obviously you want to set up your family and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, and you know, footy is a game where it's, it's really tough on the body. So, you know, you want to, you want to accumulate as much as you can and, In a short and financially be, yeah. you know, really well off and, you know, but um, I think, yeah, Jerome Luai, could turn this club around and it's and i think that would like solidify himself as like oh this guy's actually really like really good he's a really good player like, yeah he's you know sort of a legend in a sense like he's won comps and then he's come to the tigers and done the same that's why when i like appy came here i was like well he's won it for like souths and then he won two for um was it two for penny yeah two for, two penrith. for penrith yeah and then he's come here and he's you know trying his heart out like oh and he tries fucking. He tries so, so hard, hard, man. And and it's like you look at Critter as well for Bulldogs as well. Like yeah. he, he came over there and he's he's a captain there, and I think he's done an absolute like fantastic job. He's like best center, bro. Like he's just killing it there. And he's come yeah. from Penrith, who you know he had the likes of Nathan Cleary, Jerome Luai, and then Toto on the you know. So and to come to a place like the Bulldogs, where it's like in 2021 they got the wooden spoon, I think it was, or something like that. So like or. They weren't being. They weren't that good. Very close you know? to the bottom. Very for a close few, to the, fair few yeah, years. Yeah. yeah. So to come there and then turn the club around Get and then the finals. put them into the finals and have this really good run defensively as well, like crazy. So yeah. Um, I wish they beat fucking Manly because they would have put up a better fight against the Chookies, I reckon. Yeah, they would have. Well, Manly are like the Tommy's was injured. Yeah. Um, but uh. I thought mainly, yeah, they, I thought they could win, but um, because the Roosters are depleted as well. But I think it's, I think Roosters have a little bit more of that experience in terms of like, you know, we've been here before so many times. I know Manly have been there before a lot, but like Roosters just have this sort of resilience. They have, yes. they, they have like, they, they've got a lot more to play for. Like Jared's leaving, they have like half their team leaving. So it's like, a, you know, push for the final run. Doesn't matter who's like, Who's on the number like seven jersey and who's injured, who's not? Like just, just push, lift. bro. Yeah. yeah. Even lift. last night, there was a time then, like early in that second half, I thought, fuck, they're coming back here. Yeah. They might they might win this thing. Um, and then obviously Melbourne fucking, you know. Melbourne's too good. Yeah. I they think are Melbourne, too good. Melbourne, I think Melbourne win it. So, yeah. It's just. Uh, yeah. It'll be interesting. Melbourne versus Penrith. I mean, Melbourne's pipped them twice this year, but one of them's been without Cleary and, what, and then it was round one. So you can't really fucking judge round one. But. I think that'll be a really interesting grand final. Actually, a lot more interesting than 2020 when they verse each other, I think. I actually tip Sharks because I just- Tonight? For the upset, yeah. I just, maybe, maybe it'll hit, maybe it won't. Look, I, I would usually like- it's, it's, I, I know it's, look, I, I can't say I predict the future, but I know it's not going to like, it's not going to hit. But if it does, I'd be like, oh, cool, I'd pick the Sharks. Like, yeah. I can just spit in everyone's face. And then, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so whatever. But, um, but I'd, I'd like, oh, yeah, you can't go past Penrith, bro. Like, yeah, well, me and we're going to the game tonight. Um, I'm not sure when this episode's going to come out. But anyway, it's being filmed on, uh, on the day. finals yeah. day uh, for everyone watching. But um, I uh, I would usually go for the underdog. Yeah. Um, but... Cronulla to me are just the most scummy cunts on earth. I yeah, I just I fucking hate them. Yeah, same. I went to the game last weekend. No one even goes to the Shire, so fuck off. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I used to work in the Shire, so I fucking know what those cunts are like. Hey, they're bro, just gross, mate. Like, oh, 
I don't know. You know what they are? They're rich. They're they're bogans and they're like yobos at heart, but they've got money now, which yeah. makes it like the worst kind of person. Mm. You know? Yeah. Because they're like, there's no class to them at all. They're just fucking scum. <laughs> yeah, some some of the fans they were fuck man. I know. I feel like they're begging for another riot. You know what I mean? That's they're, coming they're from Tigers fans, bro. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, we 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 got half half. We got Balmain, which is you know wear yeah. your scarves and drink cafe um like caramel <laughs> lattes and shit like that. And then you got the obviously yeah, the worst, which is just like a yeah, mate, like a VB and stuff. So, <laughs> which is funny because you go to Campbelltown and it's quite a nice like fr- family friendly environment mm. for a lot for well, a lot Leichhardt, part. Leichhardt's different Leichhardt's energy, bro. rough as guts, mate. I yeah. love it. I love it. I love Leichhardt. Yeah. I, I just uh, Camel Town for me is just like nah, nah I don't I just don't like going there like it's just but the vibe in Leichhardt is ah oh, I, I love it yeah it's so good how yeah. about those Manly fans I was saying at the game we met <clears throat> mm. um, bringing their wooden spoons in and shit and there's just this old cunt <laughs> next to us this Tigers fan he's getting the lemon out of people's fish and chips boxes and just pegging it at the Manly fans heads <laughs> I can't <even> see that <laughs> and I was like this is fucking great mate this is this is what Leichhardt's yeah, they're, they're, all about. Yeah, Leichhardt's like doesn't matter if we're down by forty, bro. Leichhardt's still pumping. Like, yeah, it's it's um it's good energy there. I it love is. It. Yeah. I love that everyone stands up together on the hill. You know, like I love how they're now like oh, you know, we, I think we should play heaps more games in in Leichhardt, like heaps. Uh, and now that they're you know doing the redevelopment and stuff like that, and they got the funding for it. Yeah, oh, I'm happy for that, man. Yeah, so am I. As long as they don't fuck with the hill. Just don't touch the hill. Yeah, don't touch the hill. Don't knock down the scoreboard. Yeah. Keep that as is, you know. And you can then work around it. 100%. You can work around it for yeah, sure. Yeah. Like the hill's safe. Like that's not the part that's like run down. It's all yeah. the grandstands. It's all the facilities. Grandstand and yeah. Put the, some the, more toilets in. Yeah. Like the toilets are fucked. Like if you want to go for a piss in the middle of the fucking or at half time, you're not yeah. getting back till with 10 minutes to go with the fucking second half, you know. Um in the bar line, they need more bars and shit too. Yeah. Cause that's fucked, especially for a big game, like a big sellout game, mate, people, I don't even drink there. I just get fucked up before I go in mm. and then just sober up. <laughs> Cause I'm not going to wait in the bar line the whole game. Fuck that. Uh, you don't drink. Do you? By the way, we are drinking hardly, Strider. Hardly. Well, I'm drinking Strider. We've got one there, but um, Strider beer, mate. I'll hold it off for you guys. For a uh, crisp, crisp and refreshing taste, mate. Strider. Try Strider. It's good beer. Do you know Matty George's? Yeah, I was I, I I was I was wondering is like where's this from Strider? I was like Matty George's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. he hooked me up, he gave us a few cases of it, so it's pretty good. I like beer. I'll try it maybe in six months when I drink again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I drink every six months one one beer or one yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? That's it. That does me for. What if Tiger? Months. If Tiger's won the premiership next year, surely you. Well, go let's not a, get ahead of ourselves. Surely but- you go on a week bender, but. Just oh, for a one-off. Oh, I'm a bit too old for weak benders, man. <laughs> yeah, but, stay up. <laughs> but it might never happen again. Look, you know? honestly, uh, if yeah, if Tigers win, bro, like I don't know what. Let's get let's get to the eight first, but, yeah. and then we'll think about think about the <laughs> the grand final. I'd love to see them in the grand final one more time. Like, I like to see them in the, in the eight, but the grand final. Oh man, because I was I was a young kid, 2005. Like I was 11 years old. Um, yeah, I was just like don't remember much of it. Like I vaguely I remember watching it in my auntie's house. Um, and yeah, that was in like Carlingford as well. So it wasn't, it was in an area where it's like, you know, not even Tiger Town. So I couldn't go celebrate afterwards. Yeah. But, but I did go, I think that, um, that, uh, so the grand final, I think that the day after I went to the leagues club and I uh, got my, sh- you know, you, you get the premiership shirt with the players on the, on the back. Yeah. You know, yeah. 2005 yeah. premiers. I got that. Uh, I went to the leagues club, bought that, had a nice steak dinner. And yeah, the, it was still pumping, you know. The um the energy was up um, yeah yeah it was it was good good times uh, as I vaguely remember as a kid well but, that's uh, the thing now it's like if we win where do where do we even go to party I just, don't know do like, we just all go to Leichhardt Oval and just get I, I, I don't take know cases like what, of beers in there's what's the other leagues club there? Ashfield West Ashfield, Ashfield. Yeah. I don't know I've never been there I've yeah. never been there so I've been there a couple goes. times but you know that's Magpies but it's original Magpies territory it's not even Magpies territory now yeah which is the fucking which is Campbelltown now. Yeah, West West. But like West Ashfield, that's going back like even before it was at we were at Lidcom mm. playing. Like that's like the original, original yeah. like, club. Um back from fucking whenever it was, nineteen fucking fifteen. But the, or whatever. the West's uh West the Magpies home ground, where's that? That's Lidcombe Oval, isn't it? Well, they play some games there again now at Lidcombe, yeah. but like they're based in Campbelltown. Yeah. Well, right. they're meant to be, but... So they're half-half. This is what I mean. Like, we don't have go. an we, fucking we, we, identity. Yeah, we, that, that's the problem. We, we, 
yeah, I, I say this every time, bro. Like, it's just like when you look at clubs, they have such an identity. Like you look at the Bulldogs, for instance, like, you know. Yeah. Canterbury, bro. Like Belmore pumps. hundred you know? percent. And the but streets he, after. Is I know, I know we're crazy. a merger club and we have to cater to everyone, but like we, there's got to be something, you know. Well, yeah, and I'm okay with that catering to both, but let's just cater to both. I don't want to fucking. Why are we playing games at Combank again? I don't like that. I fucking I hate, hate that. that. I Fuck hate the shiny I hate, new stadium. Hate, like, it's got no fucking soul. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the the fact that we. I just keep suburban grounds like Campbelltown, Leichhardt. That's yeah. it, bro. We do up Campbelltown a bit. Do up Campbelltown a bit. Make it a twenty five thousand seat stadium. Fucking perfect. I hate Combank because Eels play that. I hate that, that. That's the team that I despise, bro. I hate the Eels. Bro. Same. I, I hate their fans. Hate I hate. I hate the players, bro. So just any filthy. players watch, but I just hate you, bro. It's nothing to do with anything. Yeah, it's just like, trust it's just- me, Gutho, if you're watching, I fucking hate you, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but you're also welcome to come on the podcast if you want to have a chat about it. Yeah, I just, I can't stand Parramatta, bro. I just Same. cannot. And to, well, let's talk about Spoon Bowl then, because- Yeah, when fuck. they won, I was just so like, oh, just, I just, oh, fuck, man. Why didn't, we didn't come to play. Like, I wasn't expecting a 60 what was it? 60? I don't even know what the score line is. I yeah. Don't know. What was it? 60 to fucking, I don't 16, even know. 16, something like that. 16, 18, 18 something. Something like know. that. Whatever. Yeah, we lost. Yeah, it happened. We lost. We got pumped. I actually, I walked out early, um, which I, I never I usually stayed. do. I um, I was parked right at the end of the car park and you know mm. how it's like one fucking road. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm sitting in fucking traffic moving at a snail's fucking pace after we just get flogged by fucking Parramatta in the last round. I'm fucking getting out of here. Mm. So I left. But um, but yeah, fuck, man. Oh, disappointing. So disappointing. disappointing. End of the season. Yeah. But that's what I also think about because I'm like that day I couldn't even eat. I was that fucking nervous. And this is a game to miss out on a fucking wooden spoon. <laughs> what am I gonna be like when we make the eight, cunt? I'm gonna be fucking. I think I won't be able to watch. I'll go to the game and I'll just turn around. I'll just have like headphones on. I'll be like an autistic kid in like yeah, you know, with an iPad or something, <laughs> <laughs> just fucking just trying to like. Get, you know, not pay attention to the game because fuck, my nerves will be through the roof. Mm. But then if we win, oh, fuck. Yeah. If we win, like, if we won the premiership, like, if we win the premiership, say, in the next fucking however many years, right? Five years or so. I reckon that night I'll go get a back portrait, a full portrait of the whole team put on my back. Fuck. I'll do that on game night. As long as there's beers there and I keep sinking piss. Actually, you can't really drink when you get a tattoo away because you bleed too much. Do you? I don't know. I haven't got any tattoos. I don't know. I, I don't know how long. Uh, maybe I'll just fly over to Bali then. I don't think they'll give a fuck over there. They don't give a fuck. They as long as they fuck. get the faces right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I come back and it looks like fucking, you know. Like two-year-old drawing. Right? Two-year-old drawing. It's like one of those, you know, those memes on uh, on reels, like, they, they take the piss out of the people like um, they draw the caricatures of them, but like they draw them in like a very funny way. It's like, uh, I'll, I'll show you after, but like um, yeah, it's fucking hilarious. I don't know if someone knows what, what I'm talking about, but um, I get what you mean. Like they like, uh, it's like, it's like the fuck boy that films himself and then the, it's like a flash. And then it's like the guy uh, that's like a caricature um, drawing of him. And it's like, like just mocking him. Right. Basically. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's hilarious, but I'll show you a, a few. It's fucking funny. But. Yeah, man. Um, we will talk a bit more about content. Sorry, I know we just we, we started with that and then we just got on a fucking it's, rant about the Tigers. But It's like NRL 360, bro. That's all they talk about. Yeah. <laughs> the Tigers, bro. The Tigers. It's new content, bro. I know, I know. That's all they do talk about. Fuck, we cop it, don't we? We actually do cop it. Like, <laughs> there's other teams going fucking, you know, I know we've got the wooden spoon again, but I would say there's improvements this year on last oh, yeah, couple of years. So, yeah. I think we're heading in the right direction. 100%. Um, I'm excited for next year. I think next year Same. we could... Um, we could really fucking push for something. Like, yeah. I don't know if we'll make the eight next year. There's a lot to I'll, come I like back to. From. There's always hope. I always have hope. Because what what else can you like? You can only hope for like the best for the Tigers. I guess there's. I know. I know we're the shittest team, but like, what, what do you want me to say? Oh yeah, fucking nah. Next year would get an wooden spoon. I just, yeah, I can't say that, right? Like, you just. I always say, yeah, we're making the eight all the time. It's so fuck it. One, well, I'm, I'm, one, I'm, one time we're gonna hit it. So. I'm preparing <laughs> to drop twenty five hundred on the fucking like the highest membership package i was considering that but i haven't i've never i think we remember once like back in the day i don't know yeah, you get like you get access to tags now anyway don't you like, yeah but i don't want to use that to like advantage just because oh, i'm a fuck content creator nah mate you that. deserve it you fucking too, you've too, been too, too humble on that yeah but you've been but it's not like you're not a real fan do you know what i mean like think mm. of how many content creators go to events they don't really give a fuck about like mm. i was at the nfl fucking kickoff thing and like okay i'm not gonna 
Are you an NFL fan? This, I am an NFL fan. Yes. I'm a massive Ravens fan. So, um, Seahawks. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. respect that. Yeah. I respect the Seahawks. We're like shit, but well, uh, three, three and over. It's looking good. We'll see how we go against the Lions. <laughs> Ravens we... haven't gone well. We've got Bills this Sunday too, so mm. I'm a bit nervous. But it's at M T Bank Stadium, so never. Hopefully. The NFL is. Uh, it's one sport. It's so unpredictable. Like you, it's, you can't predict it like NRL, bro. You can yeah. you, you can predict the NRL in like top four, bro, before the season starts. With um, NFL, it's just like. It's just crazy. You don't know who's going to be in the Super Bowl and everything. Like, yeah, there's one team that, you know, Chiefs. But, like, like you just do not know. Fuck the Chiefs. Yeah, fuck them. Fuck Mate, I fucking... Last, last year, because fucking... We played in the fucking, you know, um, AFC Championship game mm -hmm. against Chiefs. And um, it was our first AFC Championship game at home, Ravens. And to watch Taylor Swift come down on the field after they beat us. And by the way, there is cheating going on in the NFL for sure. Oh, all the time. 100%. In that game alone last year, there were so many fucking penalties that did not get called for the Chiefs, you know, to advantage them. And to see fucking Taylor Swift come down on the field and fucking hug her fucking boyfriend and shit after, mm. you know, on my fucking, our fucking stadium, you know. I, I, I hate how- If like, I was Baltimore Ravens, I wouldn't have let the cunt in. I don't know why they just <laughs> always like, the Super Bowl was just showcasing fucking- was it Taylor Swift and just oh, fuck off? Just I know. show the game. Show bro. the game, and that was show another some game other fans, too. bro. That aren't fucking just fans because the boyfriend plays for it. You know, exactly. show the actual true fans, bro. The actual Chiefs fans. You know the worst part? She was a massive uh, Eagles fan. Yeah, it's before. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Bro? And now she's in all the fucking Kansas City fucking. I fucking clothes. hate that, bro. Fuck off. Yeah, she's it's a fucking it. dog. Seriously, mate. she's a dog. I fucking hate that cunt. <laughs> no, true. Dude, she's fucking so stupid, bro. And they reckon she's added three hundred and thirty million dollars to the NFL since she started dating. We are obviously Kelsey. because like fucking all the fan all the fans girls will like, watch. Ah, yeah, yeah, buy a fucking Kansas Chiefs jersey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shut up, you. Actually, do you see? I was. I actually went to the Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the energy is probably pretty good. And, yeah, I know, I it know. was shit. An hour and a half into it, I was like, when's this ending, cunt? Fuck me. Oh, really? Oh, my God. It's three hours long. I'm like, fuck me. No, I, don't, I don't go to concerts. I can't even get through a three-hour movie, let alone a three-hour fucking concert of Taylor Swift songs. Attention fuck. spans are pretty fucked these days, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My attention span's not too bad. My, yeah, mine's not, not as bad as the fucking brain-rotted childs like, that run around this earth. But like, yeah. My problem was I went sober. I should have eaten like five Dexies and then I'll be in. Mm. <laughs> just hyper-focused on that bitch or not. But... <laughs> Fucking hell, bro. The outfit would have probably fucking blinded you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I went to a concert, fucking blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah, I don't know where I was. Oh, yeah. The amount of cunts wearing fucking Chiefs jerseys there that I'm look mm. we're, we're looking around. I'm like, I reckon none of you motherfuckers have ever watched an NFL game in your life. Yeah. But back to the NFL kickoff thing. So I went to that. I'm not talking shit about the people we I know, you know. <clears throat> There's some friends who are, you know, content creators and that that were there and yeah. you know, I'm not talking shit about that. But there's other people I don't know who aren't are content creators who you know, they have nothing to do with the NFL. They don't watch the NFL, they're not a fan of any team and that and they're going to these things. So for you, if you're getting invited to Tiger's <laughs> things, mate, use it to your advantage because you're an mm. actual fan. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. It's not like you're a fake cunt that's like just rocking up because like you got an invite to something, you know, influencer sort of shit. Yeah. Like you're an actual fan. If they were offering you shit, mate, if they were offering me shit, I'd be fucking taking it for sure. Well, I, I'm still waiting for the merch that they promised to send me, but. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I don't know when that's fucking it coming. It never came. Get my size and everything and postal box and they just, yeah, it's been fucking, what is it? Two months, three months. Oh, really? <laughs> Nothing. Fucking hell. But I, I, I don't like to be that person like, oh, where's my merch? Like chasing up on stuff. I, just, I, I I can't be bothered. Like I just have other things to do bro like i'm not i'm not pressed on that like yeah. sending merch or not like i'm but also know. get your shit together marketing department and send him some fucking merch mm. for fuck's sake yeah we've been through hell man and we're still supporting you cunts <laughs> yeah One day. um so in terms of your content creation now like it obviously it it when did it start to explode for you was it during sort of covert times yeah 100 percent. i think you ask any content creator that's like around these days um, that have been doing content for the past like five years, they would say, yeah, COVID kind of like driven up my the numbers. Because it was the same for John Bernard as yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I think it's just a, it was a given to be honest. Like you just had to be there. Like it, I can't explain the, like that era was so weird. Like it was just a blur. Like one day I'm like just making really shitty videos and then all of a sudden I cater it towards Australia um, with like my Lebo characters and stuff. And then, um, and then just like, yeah, took off just randomly i was like oh cool like fuck man i'm getting like some numbers here bro. yeah 
And I think just because everyone's like at home, they've got nothing else to do. On their phone, so, scrolling. And yeah. I think that's when a lot of people realize you can become content creators. I think that's just like, because back then, like if we didn't have COVID, I probably wouldn't be here. And a lot of other people probably wouldn't have been here. Like it would have been a harder grind, much harder grind. Because everyone yeah. was on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, playing video games. Yes. You know, so the, the content was like all around because a lot of people got creative, you know, they started, you know, taken up photography, taken up video games and they started just filming themselves and yes. all that stuff. I, well, I started the podcast during that time as well. So there you go. So it's like- Mainly because I was fed up with the government. Yeah. So people Sick rant out about- Yeah. So shit. Yeah. A lot of content came out of there. Like yeah. A lot of content. So yeah, it's like, look at John Bernard, for instance, like yes. with his numbers, like that's where he sort of like, I saw him first doing that stuff. And, yes. And he kind of got a name for himself like that. And then um, obviously controversially, you know, all that kind of stuff. But fuck that, fuck the government. Go on, John, bro. Yeah, you know 100%. I mean? And you know so, what? And he's never backed down. And that's never, what's made yeah. him... Because uh, that's what I always say to people. If there's controversy around anything you do, never apologize. Nah, never. Back yourself 100%. and you will sail through it. 100%, 100%. As soon as you apologize for something. Unless you do something fucked up. Yeah, like, yeah. If you touch fucking, a kid, bro. Yeah, then, if you touch then, a kid or you rape off, someone, yeah. then see you later. Yeah, yeah you deserve to be But if it's like canceled. something like, it's like a little thing like that, bro, like fuck off. Yeah, man. you're not wearing a mask and you go into a uh, fucking rally. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? Who cares? Um, I went to a rally that he was at as well. Um, we didn't meet there, but we got in touch. He followed me one day. Mm. randomly and i was like what the fuck this is crazy and so i messaged him and i was like hey bro thanks for the follow like do you want to come on the podcast and he did and we ended up filming at like i think it was his auntie's place or mm. something um in in belmore um and so we filmed there just like held road mics like it was real like yeah, shitty sort of yeah, production yeah. well you know? that, that's how you start i guess everyone starts in, yeah you know, their own ways i was filming at hawkesbury radio studios there because i was on the radio at the time yeah. just doing like a weekly show and they were like, you can use it the other room for a stu- podcast studio if you want. I was like, fuck yes, sweet. Yeah. Don't have to put out any money for it. And obviously I'm here now because I want a more professional setup. You yeah. Know? Well, you look back on it and be like, well, that's where I started. Now. Yeah. Look where I am now. Like, I look back with like a one camera setup and I'm like, oh, it's crazy fuck. though. And, but that, like, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's just good to see like how the progress goes. Like I, I look back on my videos as well. I'm like, fuck, they were shit, man. But like, it's what got me here today. So it's only, I think with content, it's, it's there's never a perfect uh, video there's never a perfect like anything it's just all about learning um and just producing content um, yeah and then yeah you basically learn as you go so there's never i'm a perfectionist but i can never perfect any video there's no perfect video of mine there will never be a perfect video of mine it's always like learning 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 and just getting content out of there and yeah and just changing up your style as you go and see where it takes you but there's never like it, being a perfectionist it just makes you um makes you care about your content. There's a lot of like creators out there that get to a point and it's just like, and then they just don't care anymore. It's like, they just don't produce the same like content they did back in the day. Yes. Yeah, because like they either sell out or they're just demotivated, um, which happens to a, a, like a lot of people. Like I, I, um, I myself, I'm like, I'm like in a content rut at the moment, like a creative block, but not for ideas. It's more so for like, um, how do I change up my skit style? Like, because I, I want to change it up a little bit, maybe make it a bit more cinematic or maybe, you know, the, the jokes aren't hitting as well as they did before, like just something like, and that's that's the sort of like rut I'm on. So I'm just going like one video a week, just hitting it out. Like I'm filming them sometimes like on Saturdays and then putting them out on Mondays. So like um, I'm like in a bit of a, like a rush at the moment with like getting videos out and stuff, but I still manage to do so because it's just like, it's a never ending thing. Like I just just got to produce something, but at the same time, think of something. That's why I started a second channel just to kind of balance things. Yeah. That second channel is not skit or anything related, no characters, no nothing. It's just like a raw element of who I am basically and what like my hobbies are. Right now, I'm just doing a lot of like abandoned stuff. I, like, yeah, I've been seeing that. It's cool, man. Yeah, I just love doing that because um, uh, yeah, I just love doing like just kind of unique, unique things and experiences for myself. Like I don't want to be like that average bloke that just, you know, goes on a tour uh, you know, be becomes like a simple t- tourist, bro. Yeah. I, whenever I go overseas, I never book any tours, no nothing. I do everything like how I want to do it, go where I want to do it. No bus tours. I just walk everywhere. Like that's, I just, I just love doing that because I find the best experiences out of that. Like, yeah. I, you know, 
Contiki, I could never do that shit. Like never do any of that stuff. Because it's more authentic. Just it's more authentic just to like yeah. not even research anything and just go. Yes. Like then and you're just getting, learn the history there. And there's no expectations too, right? Exactly. So bro. everything's a surprise then. Exactly. You know? I, that's what I want. Like I want a unique experience and, yeah. and a fun experience. I don't want to be like, oh, no, nah, we got an itinerary here. Fuck your itinerary, bro. I yeah. just go, man. And I just, <laughs> it, whatever happens, happens. And like, I just document it and that that's it. So Yeah, that's sick. So that's what I want to try and build up just like that raw sort of element of, you know, unique um, explores and adventures. It doesn't yeah. have to always be abandoned. Like I'm just going to branch out into other stuff, but just to kind of build it up. Um, I just want to, yeah, kind of do that stuff and not like cookie cut what a lot of creators do these days. Yes. Like everyone tries to be the next Mr. Beast or the next beta squad and Sidemen. 100%. Fuck just that. do your own yeah, thing. Yeah, just do your own thing. Like try yeah. and, yeah, I get trends, get you the views, but like, man, there's something about a raw um, element of like just being you. Yes. Is, is just cr- like crazy. 100%. Like you look at Spanion, bro, and why he's doing so, bro. He, the guy, like, I love watching Spanion. Like, yeah. He's just, it's just so funny to watch him. Like, he, and he's and authentically his himself. Yeah. You know? It's and just, it's just so good. It's like, it, it doesn't have to be like in sort of travel world. Like, I watch Sam Sulik as well, the bodybuilder. Like, I don't even like bodybuilding, but just to watch him just talk and just like, it's, it's just like being there with someone on the like journey sort of thing. And that's yeah. the kind of like element that I want to go with. Yeah, because so, I do skits and skits are so hard. Like I don't think people re- understand. I have to pump out ideas, and I don't like doing part ones, part twos, part threes. Like fuck that bullshit. You know, I, original, new ideas. Try and change it up. Yeah, every single time, and it's so hard because to be original these days is is very very difficult. Everything's been done. It's, yes, it's, it's it's hard unless a trend comes along and you just do something with that. But like to write scripts week in week out and then film it and then edit it. It takes a big toll on you. So 100%. Um, to step away from that a little bit and balance with my other stuff, which is easier, I just grab a camera and I just go. Me and my mate, we just go. Yeah. Just whatever, bro. Whatever happens, happens, bro. Whatever I, like I see, I see. That That's that's the raw element you're going to give. And I think that content is, for me, I, I find that interesting. And I, I enjoy if, watching content like that for sure. It just It's a bit more calming yeah. in a sort of like sense. Yeah. With, with, with skits, you have to perform you know, you got to entertain people like, but with the raw thing, it's like different types of emotions are felt. Like yeah. sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's like, oh, it's pretty wholesome. You know, anything can happen. Yeah. So I kind of like that sort of content, but um, I'm still doing skits. I still love skits, but um, yeah, it's just, uh, I like to have a balance in my life. Yeah. So, Cause playing characters is, is, yeah. Like, you know. Well, that's the thing. And also it's just, it's so much brain power. It is. Well it is. It, and because- like- it's because it's just me and like my girlfriend films for me, right? Um, but it's just ninety eight percent of everything that I do is just it's me. I don't have anyone to bounce ideas off. I yeah. don't have anyone to write my scripts for me. Um, I don't have anyone to edit my videos. I like to, which I like, but at the same time, it's it's it is very hard. Yeah, it, it is very hard. Like I wish I had someone like like you look at Superwog. There's two of them. Um, John Bernard and Nick, they can bounce ideas off each other. I wish I had someone like that to kind of like, you know, yeah, bounce some ideas off each other and I don't know, two brains are better than one sort of thing. Yeah. Like my girlfriend can only help me so much, right? But you might find a like comedy partner, you know what I mean? Like Maybe. someone to do stuff with you. Is that something you'd want? Or is I like, it like to do things like I say that like, I want it, but I like to be alone as well yeah. because I it's just my brain is completely different to like maybe what someone else, if I can find someone that, has maybe the same sort of brain that I have and the same sense fucked of, up of autism that. that I have. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but uh, it's very difficult to find people like that if yeah. you don't know them for a long time. Like trying to find someone like that is going to be like, it's going to cost some time for me. Yeah. I have to go look for that. It just doesn't happen when you, it just happens randomly. Like you meet someone like that. That's right? true. Well, me and my best mate, Jack, that you met before, mm. like we only became best mates earlier this year you know we only met properly last year mm. and like now we're doing content together and stuff but like sometimes it does you just can't come into it. your life yeah it, you can't like, search for you it you can't search for any, it you can't search for your purpose it yeah. just happens that one moment in your life you something happens like you are destined to do that or you're destined to meet this person 100%. and it just happens it's like yeah. you can't go out there trying to force yourself to find love as well it's like yeah. it's, it doesn't work like that otherwise the relationship's not going to work out exactly like that's, that's yeah. how, like how me and my girlfriend met right we met through bumble um during covid but i wasn't looking for anyone i was looking for actual like chicks to do like um like to be like a chick in my like skits or something like yeah, that, that right. that's, that's what i was um looking for but then all of a sudden yeah like four years later it's uh 
you know, we live together. I suppose and it's cheaper to go and fumble than put out a fucking oh yeah, put out an ad, bro. And put up an ad, and then <laughs> go auditions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So especially Bumble, where they message first. So if they don't yeah. message, well. Sorry, well, that's mate. true. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. It's letting them take the lead. But yeah, it just you can't. You can't like. You just can't find like it. Just happens, man. Like you know, you can't force yourself into it. So it just yes. happens. That's and that's I like with myself. anything, right? Like yeah, I feel like the harder you try for something in life, not harder you try. I think it's important to work hard for things. Yeah, yeah. But I think if you just have your mind set on just that and that alone, and that's what you and are you're going trying, for, you're, you're like trying to find it. It's like, oh, yeah, I got to find this, got to find that. Like, it yeah, just, it won't. Bro, ever just come. go with the flow, man. Like, yeah. it's just, just go with the flow, and eventually everything will line up. And as long as you work hard and stay consistent, like it's things fall into place. Yeah, you know what I mean. Have you um, doing the abandoned stuff and that? <laughs> have you seen any crazy shit? Are you into? Uh, do you believe in like ghosts and stuff? Look, I try. And, like, the thing about this, I I try to not believe in ghosts, but because of my mind, it's too creative and too like essentially what ghosts are. It's like whether you believe them or not, it's either from experiences, right? Or it's either your just imagination, right? You can just tell your brain, oh, it's just the wind. Oh, it's just like, you know, something in the corner of your room. Oh, it's just clothing. But um, I try not to believe in it, but because of my brain, it's just so like autistic and creative and imaginative, you know, like imagination is just through the roof, right? It's just like a firework that's just constantly going off. I kind of like, put myself into a situation where it's was like, ah, oh, shit, there's a demon. So, <laughs> but I remember one time, um, so like I've been doing abandoned stuff since I was like 17, 16 years old. Yeah, right. um, And then I took obviously 10 years off and now here I am back again. But I used to go to a lot of abandoned places um, when I was a young teenager. So I went to one place, two of my mates, it was a mental asylum. It's still around. Um, it's in Roselle. And uh, so we did a bit of research and found out there was one ward that was more haunted than the other ones. So we're like, okay, sweet. Um, got the GoPros ready. I don't know where this footage is gone, by the way, but got the GoPros ready, went out there at night um, and we're looking around with flashlights and found the specific ward that was uh, supposedly more haunted than the others. I'm getting goosebumps, bro. And, um, Just hearing you talk about it. And so we try to go in there. Obviously the door's locked. Um, so then we try prior open the window and, and it slides up and we're like, oh, Cool, sweet. So we all jump in there. And before we could even like take a step down this corridor, this like dark, dark corridor, we just hear a loud bang and this door just like just slams, right? <laughs> door slams. And, and we just like, without saying anything, we look at each other and we just like, one mate says, it's just, just the wind. And I was like, fuck that, mate. There's no wind here. I just like <laughs> pounce out. Like I could have told my brain, yeah, it's just the wind and continue like exploring this ward. But no, my brain said, that is a fucking demon about yeah. to chase us, bro. Like <laughs> there is an entity there. Especially in an asylum as well. Yeah, like, that's asylum. a place like, for crazy that's motherfuckers. Thing, like, you know? Why my imagination is like, I'm in an asylum. It's dark. Yeah, probably we opened the window. It hasn't been open, you know, in probably like years. Yeah. And um. And one of the doors was probably like loose and it just slammed. So like, yeah, probably the wind. But because of my imagination, I was like, nah, there's an entity there. Me and my mate looked at each other. The guy that said, um, it's probably the wind uh, said, nah, it's probably the wind. But me and my mate jumped out the window, scrambled. So all three of us just scrambled because one, <laughs> when one runs, we all run basically. Yeah, yeah. So he ran as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just all like ran out. But I could have easily told myself that, you know, it's just a thing. But being a young teenager, you, you, yeah, you got... You were you were just running, so. <laughs> well, I mean, I I do believe in in spirits and that you know I'm religious, so I believe mm. there is a uh, a heaven and a hell, and yeah, I believe that um some you know spirits get stuck here and they're sort of in limbo, and I think that's what we know today as you know ghosts or demons. I yeah. think that's what. And in a place like that, I mean, a lot of those people, um, I've actually talked to I have a friend Shana, and she's very into this and that. like she she sees mm. full figures like mm. well she says she does but you, you, can't, you can't really unless you see it for yourself but no one's gonna when, yeah. you, when you tell someone like oh i saw like this figure if you don't see it for yourself and it's then hard to it's believe it's hard to believe it? because yeah. like and then and then people are it's like if you see it and then you tell people it's hard to convince them to see it so yeah yeah but like you know each to their own no i'm not slamming anyone but like yeah, like I, I sometimes I do believe in, sometimes I don't, just depending on my imagination. But like, it's like at the same time, there could be, you know, yeah. I, I don't know, like there could be, but I haven't, I personally haven't seen sort of anything like that. I've just 
had that sort of experiences where like maybe a door has been shut or like something yes. like but really haven't seen any sort of paranormal stuff or entities that I've had weird I remember there was like I don't know if you've heard about like the black if you see a black moth it means it might be like death around and stuff like that. No, I, I'm very superstitious though. I, I, um, I, I'm come from a very superstitious family, so I remember I was in I was staying at my at my nan's place, uh, nan and pop's place back in 2007, and uh, well there like it was like school holidays, um, and so it must have been the eighth eighth of October, school last week school holidays. <laughs> um, and me and my brother were staying there and I was staying in my cousin's room and she was like, she was a bit older than me. Maybe, I don't know, she might've been, I was young. So she might've been like late teen sort of. And she goes, you know, a black moth means there's, cause there was a black moth flying around. Mm. She goes, you know, that means death. Right. Mm. And like, I obviously was a kid, so I didn't take any notice of it. Anyway, the next day we woke up and my pop had died. Mm. And ever since then, I've been like, every time I see a black moth, I'm like, motherfucker, like <laughs> someone's, <laughs> someone's going to die. Someone's can't. going to get axed. Yeah. And, um, but it's so weird that she said that. And like, that's something that like, I fully remember, like mm. I was young, but I fully, that, that's a stuck with me, you know? Yeah. And so I believe in shit like that. And also like, there was like a moment where like my dad was driving my pop's car around and he obviously changed the radio to, and it was like a slide radio. You yeah, would manually, old, old days. Yeah, yeah. Manually slide the radio. And so he had it on, um, like, you know, fucking Nova or whatever. He turned to FM and my pop always listened to 2GB AM radio. And so he was driving around for a couple of days in it and then got in the car, turned it on one day and it had been, no one else had been in the car and it was back to AM radio. Mm. And I'm like, fuck man, like I'm feeling like some yeah, things like are. Stuff, stuff like that are, and then it gets you thinking. It's like, yeah, that that's when your mind starts to like be like, oh yeah, maybe there is. Yeah, like how else could have it happened? Yeah, yeah of course, like, of course. But then there's other ways where it could have happened. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, because radios and cars, they reset sometimes and it just, just happens, bro. Yeah. Like it just, you know. And I think it's like, it's a comfort thing too, right? Like yeah. when, especially when like a family member dies, it's like a comfort thing to sort of like yeah. feel them, feel their presence still. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, I'm I'm very superstitious. Uh, it's like I got a lot of stuff that because I've I've had stuff like so like black moths and stuff. I never experienced that, but I've experienced other stuff that have you know then dominoed effect into you know kind of uh, things. So like um like we I don't celebrate my birth like you shouldn't celebrate your birthday um the day before. Like I never do that um, just because of experiences. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. Like every time I would celebrate my birthday or someone throws a party or says happy birthday or gives me a present, I tell them to go fuck themselves. Like don't, don't do that shit. Like <laughs> don't. Because <laughs> it's just because it's like a, it's like a thing where it's like, oh, you haven't been born yet. Technically you're yes. celebrating before you've been born. It's a bad omen. It's true. Okay. Every time yeah. I, I would, uh, okay. Got uh, broke up with my girlfriend at the time. Car got stolen. Um, had streptococcus one time. Like I've had all these fucking problems. Like every single time I'd celebrate my birthday the day before. Really? Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, that's just me. So I don't celebrate my, I don't celebrate my birthday in general. Like I hate that, but um, just the day before is something that I cannot do. Um, we have a Russian one. It's uh, you have to sit down before you travel anywhere. So anyone that's traveling or anyone that's taking you to like the airport and stuff, they'd sit down um, for like about, five to 10 seconds before we, it's, it's weird. Like you just have to sit down in silence and then get up and then go like, you, it's like weird. So that's a Russian, like, that's a Russian superstition. superstition. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can't sit at the corner of a table. Otherwise you won't get married if you're not married yet. So yeah, that's, that's another one. Wow. Yeah. So there, there's heaps, there's heaps. Um, don't whistle inside, inside. That's, that's another one we never do. It's like opening up an umbrella inside. That's right, a very okay. common one. Yeah. But for us Russians, we don't whistle in indoors. Um, Stuff like that. Don't put hats on the table. That's why my hat's here. I don't put it on the table because uh, then you won't have any money. It's like sort of like, yeah, it's just weird stuff. Like, And uh, is Russia like a quite a superstitious culture? Very, very, yeah, very, culture. very yeah, yeah. very superstitious culture. So I've just been brought up like that from my household and it's just been stuck with me. So yeah, well, you know, once, once you're a kid and you experience that, like as you said with the black moth, it's kind of hard to let go of that stuff because yes, it it's is. happened and you'd yes. be like, well, I don't want that to happen again. Or it's like, it's just continuing. Even though maybe it won't happen. Like you see a black moth and no one dies, but like you still kind of believe in that because yes. you've just been brought up like that. So that's with me and a lot of like, yeah, superstitious stuff. Um, there's there's like, there's all funny ones. Like it's it's weird. Like yeah, there's heaps. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty superstitious person when it comes to like 
uh, at the Tigers. Mm. Like if I'm in a particular jersey mm. and we have a big win, I'm like, that's my jersey uh, yeah, that's, for the that's, year. Yeah. Because once you're like Until superstitious we lose. with other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, um, I actually had a Falcon gave me a hat um, and I wore it to Leichhardt if, uh, the f- against the Sharks this year. And the thing about me, I've never seen the Tigers win ever live until this year. Oh, seriously? Never saw them win live. Really? Since 2008, never saw them win live. I've, I've been to Robbie Farrow's last game. I went to Tommy Radonikus's like um, like farewell thing. Farewell, I've been to- Memorial game. Yeah, Memorial yeah. game. Um, I've been to all big games. I've been to the the last time we were in the in the finals against the Warriors, 2011. Uh they obviously lost and we right missed at out. the end too. yeah right at the christian Inu. yeah but every time i'd go to a tigers game that's why i just never went to tigers games so it's just like i know i'm gonna like i'm just gonna they're gonna lose bro so i went to this one um wore my the, the hat falcon gave me and uh, i was like i wasn't expecting much with tigers with versus the sharks it's like hard oval yeah Benji. we got pumped the week before we got pumped the week before and i was like i don't know you know uh, we'll, we'll just go see what happens and they won and they played a Fucking great game. Oh, that great was awesome. Game. That was such a – Jack was there with me this year. That was actually our first time properly hanging out because we had – he came here. Um, it was his first first time I ever brought anyone to the studio with me. Mm. He came in. I think I had Nick Stav on mm. um, and forget who else was on that day. Um, oh, a friend of mine, Caitlin. Yeah. Um, and we'll go into the game and I'm thinking, fuck, it's going to be, you know, it is what it is. We're probably yeah. gonna lose. We're probably gonna, yeah, that's the same thing. But I, we won, and I was like, wow, we played such a good game against Sharks, who are in the preliminary final. Like, yeah. this is that's that's like I'm not saying the Sharks are like the greatest team, but like they they're in the preliminary final. Like they they should they're team. better than us. They're good, yeah, yeah, way better than us. So to beat them, and then the next week to beat uh, what was it Parramatta, Parramatta. and I wore Easter the hat. Monday. I wore the hat on Easter Monday. I was like, fuck, I hate playing Parramatta on Easter Monday. The record same. is shit. It's so bad. I was like, okay, sharks. Maybe that was just a fluke. We're gonna lose this hundred percent, bro. Like, we, we just we, we just suck against Parramatta. Like, that's why I hate Parramatta as well. Because as a Tigers fan, it's just they always beat us, and it's yes. just like. But to get that win, man, I was like, oh, and I was wearing the hat again. I was like, I think it's the hat. Yeah. Next week, wore the hat again. And uh, fucking <laughs> fucking lost. Yeah, we lost like seven games in a row, and I was like, <laughs> I took the hat off. I'm like. Falcon, you can have the hat back if you're watching. Right? <laughs> nah, it's a, it's a, it's a very lucky hat. It's a, it got us the my very first win ever. Um, That's crazy. That was the first time you ever I've saw Tigers never, win. Like I, I'm, I'm not genuinely, I'm like, I'm not lying. Like this, that is genuinely like the first time I've ever saw them like win. That's so funny. Bro. It, you can ask anyone like that. I that I tell like I go to games. Like they just know. Like sometimes they would message me. Like I went to. So there was a time. Uh, so it was Robbie Farah's last game. It was Cronulla versus. Um, Tigers and it was a spot for the eight. I don't know, 2018 was it? Cronulla versus Tigers at Leichhardt. At Leichhardt over. Yes. I was like, the stars are aligning. Yeah. It's Robbie Farrell's we last game. We pumped St. George the week before as well. We're looking we're looking really fucking good. This is the moment. Yeah. This is the time. Fucking absolute atrocious game. And I was like, bro, you're because I was there. I was like, I knew it. I shouldn't have gone. Like I should have just stayed home, but it was Robbie Farrell's last game. I have good tickets. Like me and my mates are there like, oh, bro, just shit house, like so bad. Yeah. And yeah. I, because I was there, I was just like, I knew oh, I'm here. I'm, they, they, they've lost. There was another moment, I think the, the year, I don't remember the year, but we, so we played Roosters game. It was the year Tedesco was um, the first year for the Roosters. So whenever they won the comp, I think they won the comp that year. I don't remember what it was. But 2018. Was it 2018? Yeah, that yeah. was the first. So maybe it was the same year. So we... um. So we beat the Roosters, like off the Cheekham's head, bro. On That's the, right, Corey Thompson. Yes, yeah? right. Round one. Round that was one. Round one. And I think we had you know Melbourne. what's crazy about that. I was I I met Luke Brooks in the city, right? And he <laughs> drove me. I sat at friends in Balmain. Mm. A friend went back to his, and anyway, uh, a female friend of mine went back to his. Anyway, so the next day he's driving us all the way back to the Hawkesbury, right? Mm. And I'm in his car and the fucking draw comes out for the following year. So this is end of 2017. The yeah, draw comes yeah, out for 2018. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, Luke, you're versus Teddy in round one. And he was like, fuck. Because <laughs> they still lived together at that yeah, time. Yeah, like yeah. Those, those two and Moses lived together. That's and, right. Um, and I told him that and he was like, get fucked. Of course, we're versus them round fucking one. And then we won that game. We won. And I think I think we had Melbourne- The next week. Next week at Amy Park and, and Melbourne lost round one. And they're saying, oh, Melbourne never lose back to back, especially at Amy Park. And yeah. we 
beat Melbourne. Yes. And, and it was, was the like, same score two weeks in a row. 10-8, 10-8. And, like, and I was like, beautiful. This is the year the Tigers win. So I get my ticket for round three against the Bulldogs at Campbelltown and we just get fucking wrong. Yeah. Why? Because I was there and I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like I just I just couldn't catch a break. So yeah, I, I, I can tell you like all the games that I've like lost, like there's been so many South Sydney ones. There'd been so many Parramatta ones. The first ever one I went to lost. So to get that win um, this year at Leichhardt Oval, was uh was a very first for me and then obviously i went to the one with manly and then yeah so now the curse is broken basically the for curse me. is broken the, cur- the curse has been broken after so many fucking years like of just l- watching them lose every single time i'll go watch them live but um yeah happy to just see them just see them win real live it was it was good so, yeah especially at Leichhardt. especially at Leichhardt. yeah because every time i've been to Leichhardt, they lose and the crowd's just like booing or it's just like dead and i'm like yeah fuck now i gotta walk down mary street like so depressed <laughs> yeah bro, i love that they don't like ush you out too like i always stick around at I, I stick for around a bit like I, and I soak that in you yeah. know it's i don't nice. like leaving early or like even if we're like getting pumped i just stay there bro, and just like soak up the atmosphere so like, yeah i pay for the ticket i may as well be here for the fucking 80 minutes bro you know that manly game was pretty special that was my little cousin's first time at Leichhardt. Mm. That was a great and, um, game, man. Great game. We stayed back. We met heaps of the players after too. Yeah. I met Galvin for my first time. I too. met Galvin actually uh, on Wednesday. Uh, we went to an EA event. FC. Oh, he was there? Yeah, him and uh, De Silva were there. Okay, yeah, yeah man. We had a really good chat. Uh, nice blokes, man. Yeah. Honestly, they, you can tell like they're um, 18 years old. They don't know how to like kind of front the media yet and like, Yes. you know kind of talk and stuff like that but they, they get that from experience and stuff so. 100% but um well lucky if you want any media uh, training come on the potty lad. yeah don't ask me bro I don't know how to fucking talk to anyone bro you've done of, well today I'm autistic bro like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that helps but yeah sometimes it does but if you get me talking I'll just ramble on but yeah really nice guy Locky and, and De Silva like they yeah um so yeah, that was really cool, really cool experience because I was like oh man it's Locky Yarvin bro like you know yeah that's kind of like you know Fanboying, I was like, man, I was talking to Lockie Yarman. Like, There's a lot of cool people there at that event, hey. Yeah, yeah, there was a few people, few people I didn't know. Um, yeah. Do you yeah. know Nick? You know Nick Stav? Yeah, I know Nick Stav. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. we did the charity match. He was the captain on the other That's team. That's right. Yes, so he's yes. got me. He's got me on one. So yeah. yeah but look, our team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, we got injured like fucking ten minutes in, bro. I'd done my fucking knee. I was like, nah, fuck this game, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, um, I forget how I met or how I got. I had Cat on. Oh, I had Wazer on. Sorry, mm. I had Wazer on, and then a few of them followed me from that episode. Um, and then sort of had yeah, had Cat, had Nick, had Lav on. Yeah. We got a small creator circle here in in like yeah. Sydney, especially like it's it's very small. Like, and everyone, I feel like once you know one person, you sort of it, meet. It trickles down. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. It it's is good. nice. It, it's good. It's uh, very, and everyone's very genuine. I feel like 100%. no no one's really no one that I've met has really been like up themselves or like yeah hard to talk to. You know, mm. like and they we all see each other as sort of equals. You know, like I'm on a podcast with I don't know how many people fucking watch this. It's nothing compared to your numbers or that. But you know, like I, I don't look down on anyone, man. Like I I, but I everyone's always having tell people, a go. Yeah. Know? everyone's having a go like i remember when i was small and trying to like oh man i wish i was like him or i wish i was did stuff with him but now like yeah i just I, I really don't look down on anyone i just kind of like everyone's in their own like sort of route i guess so yeah um but yeah just like in sydney in general i wish we had more um so like the charity match is a really good opportunity where all creators come together and stuff and do that kind of stuff because when you look at creators in uk and america uk especially like the biggest scene probably and they have all like the side men like collabing with each other and and doing like their uh, charity matches and doing all the videos with each other they all like kind of like it's they all banter with each other they're all comfortable with like each other because like and then like they all bring bring each other up and stuff so it's kind yeah. of like I, we, I wish we kind of it's just hard with australian culture we're very like we've got tall poppy syndrome we're very self-centered it's it's very difficult here and cr- like being a content creator here is very new like here in Australia. It's like no one knows how to sort of um, like control that sort of, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, control that. I want to say like job or anything, but I don't know. No one knows how to kind of control it. No no, no marketing team. Like they're still getting used to it sort of thing. There's a lot of businesses that do it, but like it's still very, very new here. Like we just, we're not adapting to that sort of like, you know? So it's good to see like a lot of NRL teams now using a lot of content creators, which is really good. Yes. Um, and, and doing their own podcasts and stuff doing too. Doing their own podcasts you know? and doing their own like sort of trendy videos. And it's kind of funny. Yeah. It's, it's, that's cause that's, it's what it is now. Like that's what content is. It's like, you know, grouping together and, and doing a lot of stuff. Um, I, I try to, it's just what I try to do. Um, 
I try to get a lot of creators. Like I, I never messaged anyone, but like I'm still trying to get a lot of creators to do uh, like this sort of video that I had planned. But um, the funding is like ridiculous in Australia to do anything. Like I know I'm not like on sideman level. I don't have the sort of financials to like hire out this like facility and, and like do sort of videos like that. But it'd be really cool to see that sort of growth in Australia. I know um, Mahmoud and, he, and For The Boys are trying to do it, if you know them. They're trying to do that stuff. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's just really cool to see everyone grouped together and kind of like get this sort of like content going uh, in Australia. Yeah. I really hope it like just grows even further. So I think it will. I think, um, <laughs> I mean, the growth has been massive just since like 2020. Yeah, know? heaps, heaps. Um, and the Ye- amount of people doing content now. And, and also I think the fact that, I think the reason that, creators or you know someone doing a podcast or someone doing content creation or an influencer the reason why we actually get along in person is because we're we're who we've got you know what i mean like because the outside noise is so loud sometimes even for someone just starting out you know the amount of people that talk shit and that but the fact is is that those people the people who talk shit are people who never put themselves out there yeah 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 and i think that's why we sort of like get along so well we understand the the world like we and kind also of, the risk yeah. you're taking the personal yeah. risk you're taking and putting yourself out there yeah even on a smaller level just starting out to a person who's made it and they're on fucking you know like cats on fucking sbs and optus sport and whatnot you know but she had to start somewhere as well and i feel like there's that that there's that respect there you know that 100%. respect for someone just putting themselves out there and doing it yeah i think everyone should just put themselves if you want to like start making videos like or do anything start a podcast start a fitness channel do anything right like i just just put yourself out there and just try it. Like the only thing you've just got to try it. Like there's no like, there's no eventually. There's no uh, maybe. I just I have to get a better camera. Fuck your camera, bro. Just use your phone. Like there's nothing. Just start like something. Yes, hundred percent. So like we all started from somewhere, and then once you get in the groove, you learn from your previous videos. How can I make myself better? How can I change this up? And use other people as inspiration. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't completely take their content and stuff, but use them as inspiration. Like how do they, how, what are their techniques? And then put your own flair into it. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's, it's, a, it's a learning experience. And once you get your niche and, you, and the ball starts to get rolling, 100%. You, you kind of like develop your own sense of identity and then you can use that to, you know, level up your growth and keep going and keep going. Exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, just use other people as inspiration. And I guess, yeah, just, just you gotta start, man. Like, you know, there's no point in putting it like, in the closet bro and just locking it up like yeah. you just gotta you know get it out there 100 like, um yeah like with my second channel i was like i was contemplating contemplating and um so i went to europe the, the reason i started this second channel is because when i posted on my um like a uh, main channel the videos all flopped like i went to europe had all this like planned out everything like oh, i'm gonna do this 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 and this because i went to japan and i did esha in japan and it was a really fun video to film i think japan is just a place where it's just like like content galore like it's crazy but then when you go to europe it's a bit different and it just like all the videos i try to f- change up the style and it just it kind of flopped yeah. um a lot of things that i couldn't control uh, i had to change some videos up this and that and then i was just on the run so i completely sacked the whole plan off and i was just on the run constantly just putting out content of just random like vlogs and stuff like that, whatever I could think of skits here and there, but the whole, essentially that, that sort of project flopped for me. And I was like, man, like I just jeopardized my fucking um, like main channel. Like what the fuck have I done? I was like in Europe and I was like, bro, these views are getting fucked. Like what the fuck have I done? bro? Like I've just, um, I guess like when you don't know, you don't um, like, you don't know if you're going to like, if it's going to work or not. So that's the thing. Unfortunately for me, it didn't work that sort of style, but you learn from it. And I made a separate channel and now I just like, there's a balance. So I'm not always focusing on like a Shaq TV channel with this one channel I've branched out and made a separate one. So I can put all my stuff on that yeah. and grow that separately instead yes. of trying to balance on one channel where people know me for skits. That's so, true. Yeah. You know, I'll just do it like that. That's what a lot of creators do. Like they, they do their reacts channel, they do their main channel and stuff yeah. like that. So it's kind of a good balance to put yourself. Otherwise you get in there and, and it's like, it flops and you're like, well, fuck man. Like, cause this is my full-time job. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, the views are not that good. And uh, you know, it's, it's essentially my full-time job. So I need the views to kind of like exactly be leveled with what I was doing. So to take that risk and do 
all that other stuff and for it to flop i was like man i'm halfway across the world like i have no other ideas on my head like what am i gonna do so yeah so i kind of regretted not making a second channel for that stuff and just posting that and then posting like skits as i go um i was just solely focused on like yeah it was just kind of but it's a learning it's a, yeah that's the thing to be a, yeah to be a content creator you're never gonna get it right you're never gonna it's never gonna be perfect as i said before so. and the fact is is that everyone's still figuring it out yeah everyone is yeah 100 you know? percent. no 100%. one's a fucking expert in this you can't be never, a fucking expert never. in this you can, it's too you, new if you watch mr beast and you think oh because he does ana- analytic shit it's like no buddy he's the biggest subscriber in the fucking world bro youtube's just gonna pump him up bro everyone knows his name now like exactly he, it doesn't matter what he does now it's not about analytics bro yeah fuck your analytics bro well he's even had controversy lately and it's just it's sort of pumping like him up. and it's it, just wiped it's away just you wiped know? away bro it doesn't yeah. matter like the guy's analytics is that's a fucking hoax bro don't look at oh my god okay so uh, i got this amount of retention and yeah, yeah okay retention helps but it's like is your content like good or is it like actually like uh, is the information you provide good is is the skits you provide funny is like is anything it's it, is it actually good so yeah. no one knows it's not about like your fucking analytics yeah the thumbnail may do a little bit good job but like those clickbait titles are way gone bro like those 2010 titles and shit yeah. that, that's gone bro like yeah people just get the shits now if they click in and something completely different to 100% it bro like, you get yeah. you go fucking roasted bro you're not gonna get numbers like that so you yeah. clickbait all that bullshit is is gone yeah. now well and look I, at the biggest podcast in the world joe rogan he's Bro. His titles are literally the episode number and the fucking guest yeah, name. Yeah, it's not know? about... He doesn't care about uh, like fucking analytics. analytics. Like, oh, yeah, yeah I got to get this thumbnail to do this and that and that and this. I find that shit as a YouTuber, I find that shit so rubbish, bro. And people like think about that. As well as subscribers, I think that is a fucking rubbish as well, bro. Like va- it's a vanity metric, bro. It looks good on the, um, on the front, but in the back fucking provides nothing, bro. Yeah, yeah, it makes you look good. But if your subscriber count to your fucking view count is fucking shit... What are the subscribers going to do? It's like, yes, I got a million subscribers. Yeah, but your views are 10,000, bro. Where are they? Where are these subscribers? It just makes you look like a fucking hoax, bro. Yeah, exactly. So I try and not look at subscribers at all. Like, yeah, I I thank you for subscribing and stuff like that. I'm actually like quite grateful, like 317,000 subscribers and stuff. But um, I just got to produce for those subscribers. Like if I hit a million, I've got to make a million subscriber sort of content. Like it's got to be for my million subscribers. Like not fucking bullshit. You know, for 10,000 yeah. views and you've got a million subscribers. Yeah. You know, I'd rather a million views and 10,000 subscribers. That's the sort of like, that's what that's YouTube true. pays. That a lot of people don't understand. It's the views that pay, not the subscribers. Yes. So yeah, subscribers are good, makes your channel look good. But does it perform if you're going into the analytics part? No, it doesn't. Yeah, because so, if, you, if your subscribers aren't even watching your videos, yeah, exactly. what the what, fuck what, you got? What, what, do you, yeah. what have you got? Like, what are you trying to, what are you trying to do? So yeah. your subscribers have to watch and it's got to be a sort of, I'm not saying all million subscribers have to watch, but at least- have it leveled so it's like yes some some subscribers are actually still dedicated to your channel yeah and that's the main thing is you're trying to make a community that watches your video not just oh i click the subscribe button and you know or do all this stuff i hate doing that shit yeah it's like it's so fucking it's so shit it's like yeah okay they click the subscribe you but you're just telling them to subscribe you're not telling them to go watch the other videos you're not telling them to do that you've got to produce that sort of shit you know yes, what i mean 100 percent. so it's like yeah Subscribe, like, and comment. Oh, fuck off, man. Yeah. Jesus Christ, bro. It's a cringe. Jesus. Now, I do uh, I do like to, uh, I mean, you gave some good advice there, but I do like to end my uh, podcast with um, with my guests giving advice to anyone, uh, you know, who wants to do what you do, mm. um, who wants to put themselves out there, uh, to any Tigers fan who's on Suicide Watch at the moment. Um, <laughs> Better days ahead. Don't worry. There's, there's more to life than just watching Tigers, bro. Like, it's just footy at the end of the day. It's not that deep, bro. It's not that we, deep. We all get put in the same fucking dirt, man. Like, it's just like you watch your team, they lose, they don't. Just forget about it, bro. Like, it's fucking, it's all jokes, man. Come on, man. It's life, bro. <laughs> fucking enjoy it. To anyone, you know? uh, to anyone just starting out, you know, uh, young people watching <laughs> that want to make content or older people watching that wanting to start making content, mm. um, what would be your advice to them? Yeah, look, just, um, First of all, you've got to, you've got to, the, the thing about content, it's, it's not for everyone, right? This, this sort of thing about hard work and consistency, yeah, it's good, but some people, the reality is some people don't make it, right? That's the reality truth. You've got to, it's got to be a bit, um, you've got to be a bit lucky when it comes to this sort of stuff. You've got to be at the right time, right moment. But with, to be in the right time, right moment, you've got to obviously be consistent and pull out content. But sometimes it's just like, just because you want to, you see other people do it, is it actually what you really want to do? Like, is this your passion? Like for me, this is what I want to do. This is my passion. I've been doing like acting in front of the mirror since I was a little kid. You know, I'm introverted. I was a, 
shy kid growing up, but I, I, I knew this is what I wanted to do. I knew I was creative. Didn't have any, I wasn't good at any sport. Yeah, tennis, basketball here and there. Um, parkour for seven years. Academically, fucking forget about that, bro. Like I was shit at school, bro. Last and everything, none of that. But I knew I was creative. So if you know that you're creative and you you know that you have an imagination and you know that you can provide some sort of entertainment value to the world, then go ahead. But if you don't see that within yourself, um, it's just like uh, maybe try focus on something else. Like for me, I loved content. Like I just loved watching YouTube. I love playing video games. My whole world is about content. I just love, I love consuming it and I love producing it. Yeah. That's me. Um, so you got to have this as a sort of mentality where it's like, this is my purpose in life. Like I want to do this or that. It doesn't have to be with content. It can be with anything in life. Like yeah. not everyone has to be a content creator, but you got to put yourself out there um, whether it's like job, whether it's like uh, you want to be an athlete, but you have to start and you have to sort of work towards your purpose in life. Like that's the main thing. You have to put yourself in that mindset where it's like, this is my purpose in life. I'm not going to get anyone, like no one's going to stand in the way. I'm going to drive myself, you know, it's only you, bro. Like this is the only person that can start. I can only give someone advice, but the person has to pick themselves up and just go like, and it's just you that are controlling it. So for those people that are watching that I want to like, do something in life, which I think everyone should do. You can't just sit there on a couch and, you know, fucking scream at a TV and be fucking negative and shit, which is a lot of people are. Like a lot of people are, you know it for yourself. I know it for myself. A lot of people in comments, bro, you oh, know, behind yeah. the backgrounds. If you want to be that type of person, go ahead. It's the easiest thing to do in life. Yeah. But the best thing to do in life is to be uncomfortable, right? That's the best thing. So get out of your comfort zone and just try and do something in life, man. Like just trial and error, do some stuff join a sports club, you know, get some confidence going. That 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 boosts a lot. Like I had no confidence. I started doing parkour, met a lot of people, boosted my confidence, started filming. Like that's how I, you know, leveled up my stuff. So happens with everyone. Like if you want to start a podcast, maybe talk to other people, maybe go to like, I don't know, some sort of functions or, you know, get to know other people, uh, watch other like people's content. So there's a lot of ways that you can like put yourself out there and, and, um, and do what you want to do. But yeah, the main thing is just to start and and know your purpose in life and and just don't let anyone say that you can't do anything. So, you know, fuck everyone else, bro. I don't read comments, man. Like, I uh, fuck those, like, people, you know? Like, I don't, I don't 100% really care. fuck those people. Fuck those people. Like, no one gives a fuck, bro. Like, you, you don't say that shit to anyone's face, bro. These guys, they're, they're just get there to get your attention. So if you're scared of putting yourself out there and the fear of, like, um you know, someone saying bad shit about you as a content creator, then that's, it's not the job for you, man. Like you got to be prepared for people to like say shit about you and, and, you know, leave negative comments. You have to be really like thick skinned to be in this game. And if that's not you, well, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Like find, yeah, try and find, find something, something else. else. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, just put yourself out there, bro. Get out of your comfort zone. Never be un like, never be comfortable, bro. It's always about uncomfortable. Have a fucking cold shower, man. That puts you on in an uncomfortable state. Like do something, man, that just makes you uncomfortable. Like, cause that's where the growth is. hundred percent. That's where the growth is. So yeah, that's all I got to say, man. But yeah, it's awesome. good. To, thank you for having me on. No, uh, thank you for coming in. Um, you're welcome anytime. Really appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully next year is a better year for the Tigers. I feel it will be. Yeah, I I, um, I, I feel, yeah, I think I think we're going in the right direction. That's the thing. Like hundred percent. We, we, the only thing we need, I just want to add, we need a an experienced assistant coach. We do. Because Benji, Benji can't do it alone. He can't do it alone. Yeah. He had Robbie Farrah, bro. Come on. Fuck you. Really? Robbie Farrah? Fuck, <laughs> come on. The guy Brent Hodgson is maybe coming back. Brent Hodgson could be a good shot, but I, I don't want I don't want fucking 2005 Tigers all over it. Like, exactly. Just we need someone, to get rid of the get, get like uh, nostalgia. A, like, look at Holbrook. He's in um, Roosters. Like, yeah. He, great job. We need someone like a Holbrook um, to come in and, and, you know, maybe – get the pressure off Benji defensively or offensively. Like something, something needs to happen. We need an experienced coach. We can't get Brad Arthur or Madge because they're, I feel like they're head coaches. They're not, they're not yeah. thing. So we need some sort of like assistant coach that can lead um, Benji sort of like take the pressure off and lead, lead like a, a group um, in the right direction. So yeah. that's one thing we need. So 
if anyone's watching on the board of the Tigers, Shane Richardson, I don't know if he watches his podcast, but that's who we need, brother. Like as a Tigers fan, like, you know. Richo, you're welcome on any time, brother. Richo, mate, watching. we need, we need a, we need a. Let's talk business. We, we need to talk business here, right? If we want to win, bro, I've, I've seen through it all, brother. Like I've fucking seen it. You've seen it as well. Like, we know, we know what we need. Oh so. yeah, we know what we need and we know pain. We know fucking pain, We don't want to go bro. in, you know, we don't want to have pain any longer. We're going for four spoons, mate. Oh, fucking, mate. Oh, mate, I'll probably, I'll probably off myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much for coming in, brother. And remember, All guys, good. speak free with Matty G.